Harbor House of Central Florida helps families, including pets from all different backgrounds. But yearly, half of the survivors who are in imminent danger who seek help are children. With the holidays approaching, it's the time of year when children really come to mind the ways we can get results for them. So this Thursday, Harbor House is hosting a special event for its youth programs that might help check some items off your holiday shopping list. So joining us now is Michelle Sprozel, CEO of Harbor House of Central Florida. Good morning. Thank you so much for your coming and thank you for showing all these pretty bags. Thank you very much for having me this morning. This is a fun event and it's going to be great, especially in time for Christmas. And so it, um, it's a purse auction where we have people buy purses and it supports our youth program at the emergency shelter and in the community. Okay, so for anyone who hasn't been to the Handbags for Hope yet, um, how does the process all work? So people can join and be part of the Handbags for Hope even if they are not um, here. Um, it's a virtual auction, and so we have everything from a Louis Vuitton to Coach to Michael Kors to Kate Spade, some of the ones that we brought here today. And someone can log in, be a part of it, bid online, and we have Buy It Now if you're really excited about it, or you can bid for the purse that you want. Um, we also have a part that's gonna be in person where all the purses will be on display, and that's going to be at the Abbey this Thursday. And then also, um, I kind of know the MC, and she's sitting <laughs> up there with you guys, and so we're excited to have Candace be part of it, the event again this year. It's, it's just so great to see so many, uh, so mm -hmm. many men and women just kind of walking around, you know, having the little hors d'oeuvres and just yeah. kind of looking at the different purses. And it's also great because, you know, last year we weren't able to do it because of COVID, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, kind of figuring out ways of doing it, and now it kind of sprung into this kind of virtual uh, world is, you know, yeah. tack, tacking on to the personal part too, which is, which is great. I mean, what is the children's programs um, that we're trying to help here? So we have a lot of different programs that we have for our kids. We have something called Trailblazers where we have a day camp for any of the kids that are living in our emergency shelter whenever there's a school holiday or something of that nature. Um, we did a lot for the holidays with, um, with Halloween and we had a lot of kids programs happening then. We also have a program that's in the schools. We're with Evans. We're also with Buena Vista High School where we do healthy relationships and we work with the kids there. We have staff members that work directly in the high schools. And then we also have a program that's called Camp Hope, which is actually the main fundraiser for this event right here. It's a year long program where we work with kids that have experienced violence in their home. And they might be kids who are living um, in the community and they are now with the non-offending parent. And we wanna work with them and teach them perseverance and hope um, and help break the cycle of domestic violence. And we do that with um, programming once a month with them called Pathways, and then it all basically escalates, and we do a stay away camp for a week in the summer. And mm. it's a great program. It's challenged by choice, and it's really about making sure that kids who we know are resilient, we're giving them a lot more opportunities to be kids, but learn more about how to overcome their past. And I know as we head toward the holiday season, that can be really difficult, especially for survivors, but there are ways that people watching at home can help and even adopt a family. Yes, so this time of year we are doing our, um, it's called Gifts of Hope program, and so we have a lot of our different families that are living out in the community. We typically have right around 130 to 140 families that we will match up with donors in our local community, and we really just talk to the families and find out what it is it that they need, and we ask for unwrapped gifts to be given to us, and then we are able to give them to the families for them to wrap and put underneath the trees. And so we ask for people to reach out to us. You can do that by looking at our website or calling Harbor House, and we can get you matched up if you're interested in doing the Gifts of Hope program as well. And Michelle, we know that we talked to you previously about how there had been an uptick during the pandemic, but this is really uh, now more than ever that you need extra help and extra support for Harbor House. We do. With pandemic still going on, we canceled our largest fundraising event. Actually, we didn't cancel it. We're postponing it to February, but we normally have a lot more resources at this point in time. And so we're really asking for the community to be able to help us out by participating in the events that we are putting on. This will be our first in-person event that we've had in well over a year, like everybody else with Handbags for Hope. And then also getting involved with our Gifts of Hope program. And then also if people just want to find out more about Harbor House, you can go to our social media or our website to be able to donate. All right, Hi. Michelle, thank you so much. Can't wait to see you on Thursday. And of course, can't wait to see so many viewers, whether it's logged on or in person, mm -hmm. helping and participating in such a good cause. Thank you. Thank you.